Hi, my name's Ines. I'm one of the teachers here at Yoga West. And I'm here to guide you through this slow flow practice. Um, so for this practice of slow flow, um, you may want to have one or two blocks um, just handy, even if you don't end up using them. I always think it's quite nice to have uh, some props nearby uh, in case you choose to use them. Um, and then if you feel like you tend to get a little bit chillier during your practice, just make sure you're going to be warm enough um, for this practice. Um, we're going to start this one lying down on our backs. Um, so you can choose any supine position that you would like. That can be lying down on your back with your legs extended. You might like to have the soles of the feet flat on the floor, or you can decide to have the soles of the feet together to touch in a Supta Baddha Konasana position. And again, this is where you might use your blocks underneath your knees if you wanted a bit of support um, for your knees. And just once you've made your way into your supine position, your lying down position, if it feels okay to here, you can let your eyes close. And if that's not an option for whatever reason, you can always have the eyes half closed instead. And I just invite you to take a few moments here just to really let yourself land in your space. If it feels helpful to you here, you can become aware of your points of contact with the earth beneath your body, sense that support from the earth. And you can also start to become aware of the breath here. Maybe just sensing the pace of the breath in the body, the speed of the breath, and the depth. And then if you feel like you want to adjust the breath or shape the breath in any way, then you can, whether that's lengthening the exhale or deepening the breath. Or if you want to practice with ujjayi breath, you can introduce that in now. If you're not familiar with ujjayi, the action is the same one that you do when you're trying to fog up a mirror or glass, but your mouth is closed. Spending a few moments longer here, really allowing yourself to land in your space and allowing your awareness to really land in your body. And when you're ready to here, you can start to bring the knees in towards the chest. You might find that a little bit of movement feels nice. Maybe it's a sway from side to side, or you might like to circle the knees here, maybe in one direction and then in the other. So you just start to move through the lower back and the hips. And then we're taking this into a thread the needle. So if you bring your right ankle on top of the left thigh, now you have the option here of leaving the left foot on the floor. Or if you'd like, you can also thread your arms through and catch hold of the left leg. There's also an option here to use a block or a cushion underneath the back of the head here if you feel like you'd like a bit more support. And here, just starting to observe, notice how the hips feel. And then if you just take two more breaths here in your own time, just your own two breaths, and mindfully transition to the other side once you've done those two breaths. So just starting to consider how you get from one posture to another. Perhaps throughout the practice, placing that same level of awareness and importance on each of the transitions between the asana, between the postures, as you do on the postures themselves.
And in that way, when we look at the way in which we move from pose to pose, we can start to create a real moving meditation rather than just a series of postures. That's not to say the practice has to look any specific way or be a performance. Rather, it's about the internal experience, how it feels to really place your awareness on how you get from one thing to another. When you're ready to here, you can start to come out of this pose. And you might like to catch hold of the knees. And maybe here, you find a few rocks and rolls up and down. The spine just moving through this a few times. And on the third or fourth time, coming all the way up. And then making your way up onto all fours, so into your tabletop position. And then from your tabletop here, you can start to find a bit of movement. So it might be that you want to work with a cat-cow, where you breathe in, drop the belly, take the gaze up, and then exhale round through the spine. And you can keep working with this, working with your inhale and your exhale. Or if you feel like you want to work with some non-linear movement here, you're very welcome to start to bring that in. So whether that's moving around in circles or drawing a figure eight shape with your nose and tracing that with your body. There's no real right or wrong way of doing this. The invitation here is just to start to get a sense of how your body feels right now. Start to link the breath and the movement together. So just a couple more rounds here. And then just on an exhale here, you can start to bring this back into your tabletop position, so back into a neutral sort of spine. And we're going to do an upper body variation of thread the needle. So as you breathe in, if you float your right fingertips up towards the ceiling, and then as you exhale, thread the right arm under. Now here, again, this is where you might use a block underneath the head if that feels good. I quite like turning my left fingertips to face in towards my face here. And I find that I can really push into that left hand and feel a little bit more through the twist. You might decide that you want to reach your left fingertips forward, or you could even reach them behind you here if you like. And you can let yourself kind of have a play around with the variations in the poses. Just noticing what you feel, what feels right for you. On your next inhale, if you press back up through the left hand, reach the right fingertips up towards the ceiling, and then exhale, place that hand back down. We're going to breathe in, lift the left arm up, exhale, thread the left arm underneath the right. Again, you could use your block underneath your head here if you like, and then you decide what you're doing with your right arm, whether you turn the right fingertips to face in, you might reach the right fingertips forward or even behind you here again. Keep the jaw soft, staying with the breath here. And then on an inhale, you're gonna press back into that right hand, reach the left fingertips up towards the ceiling. And then exhale, place the hand back down onto the mat. From here, coming into our dolphin, so dolphin is a forearm down dog, so you've got options in terms of how you choose to position your arms here. Some people like to have the arms sort of parallel, other people prefer to have the hands together to touch. That's completely up to you, it depends on how this feels in your shoulders, and again, if in doubt, maybe try both ways out. And then tuck the toes under, and you can walk the feet in towards the elbows here. Try and see if you can almost push the floor away with your forearms here. The knees can be bent, they don't have to be straight. Start to sense the strength of your own body here. We're gonna take one more breath in. And then as you exhale, you can lower the knees down. And I invite you to push back into a child's pose if child's pose feels restful for you and your body. And if child's pose doesn't feel so great, Maybe sit or kneel or do something that does feel restful here. 
whether you're in your child's pose or whether you're seated, it might feel nice just to roll the head gently from one side to the other, softening through the neck, through the jaw. And then when you're ready to hear there's no rush, you can start to make your way into your downward facing dog. So Adho Mukha Svanasana. And then here in your down dog, again, you've got the option here if you want to create a little bit of movement, like pedaling out the feet, then you can. Or you might decide that today stillness feels quite interesting. And then in your down dog, think about spreading the fingers out wide here. And then without moving them, pretend you're pinching the yoga mat between the thumb and the index finger. And then rather than trying to sink your heels down towards the mat, see if you can lift the 10 toes. They might not lift off, but just notice what happens in your legs when you try and lift away from the earth rather than sinking into it. At the end of your next exhale, look forward in between the hands and you can start to tiptoe the feet behind the wrists here. And we're gonna come into our rag doll so you can catch hold of opposite elbows. Knees can be bent. Again, you can find a bit of movement here if that feels good. Maybe swaying from side to side, shaking out the head if that feels nice. And then releasing the grip of the elbows. Keep some of the weight into the heels here. Knees stay soft. And a bit like you're in slow motion. Again, think about the transition. You're going to start to peel yourself all the way up to standing. So there's no rush. Again, just taking your time to notice how you get from one thing to another. Once you've made your way up to standing from here, we're going to come to find our Tadasana, so mountain pose. You can do Tadasana with your big toes touching if that feels steady and comfortable in your body. Or you can do it with your feet sort of roughly hip width distance here if that feels a little bit more comfortable. I invite you to keep a micro bend in the knees here so you're not kind of locking out the knees. And then see if you can abduct, so that's to say pressing your feet gently away from each other, a bit like you're trying to rip the mat in two. And as you do that, notice what happens in your glutes and in the tops of the thighs and the quads. Think about reaching the crown of the head up towards the ceiling here, but keeping the shoulders and the jaw soft. So you're strong in your body, but you're not rigid. And then from here, we're just gonna work through some standing sun salutations, so linking breath and movement. So as you breathe in, sweep the arms all the way up, take the gaze up towards the thumbs. As you exhale, fold forward over the legs. On your inhale, hands onto the shins, come into a halfway lift. Exhale to fold. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up. Udva Hastasana. This time as you exhale, lower the arms down by your sides, come to stand, Tadasana. Two more of those, breathing in, sweeping the arms up. Exhale, folding. Halfway lift as you breathe in. Exhale to fold. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up. Exhale, release the arms down by your sides. Last one. Reaching up, breathing. Exhale, fold. Halfway lift, breathing in. Exhaling, folding. Sweep the arms all the way up. Udva Hastasana. And as you exhale, release your arms down by your sides, coming to stand, Tadasana. From your Tadasana here, you're going to come into chair pose, Utkatasana. So as you breathe in, find that seat in your chair, sweep the arms up. Just like with Tadasana, you can choose whether you want to have your feet together or you might decide you want to keep them hip width distance. And rather, again, rather than sort of just sinking and sitting into the chair, see if you can press the feet away from each other. Same action. Notice what happens in the tops of the thighs and in the glutes here. You might even want to really reach up through the fingertips here. We're going to take one more breath in here. 
And then as you exhale, fold forward over the legs, Uttanasana. Coming into a halfway lift as you breathe in. And then you can choose, step straight back into a downward facing dog, or if you wanna move through a vinyasa, then move through a vinyasa, that's just optional. On your next inhale, float the right leg up. And again, just notice how you move the leg through space. As you exhale, take the knee towards the nose and then step the foot in between the hands. You can always guide it through here with your hands. On your inhale, coming up into your crescent lunge. Just give yourself a moment here, find the feet. Maybe relax the toes of the front foot and push through the heel and the big toe joint. And then think about using your back leg here. So push through the left big toe joint. Notice what happens to the top of the left thigh, the left glute here. We're gonna draw the navel in and we're gonna inhale here. And then as you exhale, take your left arm forward, your right arm back. And if you like, you can gaze towards the right fingertips. Keep pressing through the feet. If you feel yourself really leaning heavily forward here, imagine like someone's pulling you back very gently by the right hand here. On your inhale, coming back into your crescent lunge. And then as you exhale, open warrior two. Again, just finding the feet here. Again, if you find that sort of feeling like you're leaning really heavily into the right side of the body, see if you can push into your left foot here. From here, we're gonna straighten the right leg, reach the right fingertips forward, and take this into Trikonasana, triangle pose. You can look up towards your left hand here if you like, or if you prefer, you can keep the head facing forward, especially if the neck is not so happy when you look up. Notice here, if you're sinking into the right side of the body, think about pushing the right hand into the right leg, drawing the navel in and work this pose as a twist. It's an open twist, so you're breathing in, reaching the crown of the head forward, and then as you exhale, opening the chest up towards the ceiling. On your next inhale, coming back up, and then as you exhale, re-bend the knee, coming back into warrior two. Flip the front palm, reach forwards and reverse. Think about lifting up and out of the sides of the waist. We're gonna inhale here, and then exhale, cartwheel the hands down to frame the front foot, and you can step back into your down dog or into a vinyasa here if you prefer. And then we start to move over to the other side here. So on your inhale, if you float your left leg up, again, just notice how you move that leg through space. Exhale, take the knee towards the nose and then step the foot in between the hands. Breathing in, sweeping the arms up, coming into your crescent lunge. Again, notice the feet. Think about keeping the back leg strong. And you wanna use the muscles in the trunk of the body here, so maybe knit together the abdominals. We're gonna breathe in here. Take this into our twist, so this time it's the right fingertips forward, left arm back, and if you like, you can look out towards the left hand. Think about pushing into that right foot so that leg is strong. And you're staying with the breath. On your inhale, coming back into your crescent lunge. And then exhale, we're opening. Warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Again, just find the feet here, find that strength, maybe relax the toes. And then here we're gonna to start to straighten the front leg and take this into triangle pose, Uttita Trikonasana. So reaching forward with the left arm and then we're gonna pivot and you've got the option of looking up towards the right hand here. Think about pushing through the back foot. So again, if you feel yourself leaning heavily into that left side, think about using the back leg. On your inhale, we're coming back up. Rebend the knee, warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. Flip the front palm, reach forwards, and then reverse. Again, keep that back leg nice and strong. Keep the navel drawing in. We're gonna inhale here, 
and then exhale, cartwheel the hands down to the mat, and you can choose vinyasa, down dog, or if you'd like to rest in a child's pose or kneeling, you're very welcome to do that. You have a couple of breaths here. And then if you're still resting and you would like a little bit longer to rest, you could stay here. Otherwise, you're going to look forward and again, you can either step or lightly hop the feet towards the top of the mat. Breathing in to lift halfway and then exhaling to fold. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up, Udva Hastasana. As you exhale, release the arms down by your sides, coming to stand, Tadasana. Find a moment just standing in your Tadasana, feel the feet. You can have your eyes closed or half closed. Feel the breath. And then when you're ready to here, we're going to move into our next pose. We're going to come into eagle pose, Garudasana. So for this one, if you start by reaching up the arms as you breathe in, and then you're going to take your right arm underneath the left and cross the arms over, sit into the legs and take the right leg over. So right arm under, right leg over. Now, if this isn't so comfortable, what you can do is have your right toes on the floor if you don't want to be balancing on one leg. And what, if this isn't great on the shoulders, you can actually catch hold of opposite shoulders here as well. So in your eagle, think about keeping the eyes nice and steady. Find a point on the wall in front of you here. You're finding that drishti. Squeeze the inner thighs in. And again, just thinking about the transition, a bit like you're in slow motion, you can start to come into your half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. So just nice and slowly starting to unravel here. A bit like you're moving underwater. Keep the right leg strong so the foot is flexed or pointed. Your left hand can be off the floor, on the floor, or I quite like using a block here underneath the left hand. I always feel like I've got a little bit more space when I do. Again, keeping that right leg nice and strong. If you've got your left hand on the floor on a block, see if you can barely touch the floor or the block. So again, we're not sinking into the left side of the body. Again, a bit like you're in slow motion, you're gonna start to land this back into warrior two. So bending into the left knee, land the right foot down, Coming to find your warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. And then from here, we're gonna flip the front palm, reach forwards, and we're gonna reverse just like we did before. And take this into extended side angle, Pajvokanasana. So you want your left forearm to the left thigh. Right arm sweeps over the head, and you can look up towards the right fingertips if you like here. Push down through the right foot. And again, just like you were doing in triangle, it's the same action here. It's an open twist, right? So as you breathe in, you're reaching the crown of the head forward. And as you exhale, you're trying to spin the chest open towards the ceiling. We have a couple more breaths here. And then on your inhale, coming back up into warrior two. And exhale, pause here. On your next inhale, flip the front palm, reach forwards. You're going to reverse. This time, cartwheel the hands inside of your left foot, and you can walk your left foot out to the side. So you're coming into a lizard lunge. Lots of different ways of doing lizard. You might stay up on your hands. You might even grab a couple of blocks here for underneath your hands. That can be quite nice. The back knee can be up or down. You might even press your left hand into the left leg. Some of you might prefer to come down onto your um, forearms here as well. So a few different options. Again, you can work with being still, or it might feel interesting to find a little bit of movement. You might find a gentle rock forward and back, or maybe some circular motions. And Again, there's no kind of right or wrong way of doing this. You can let yourself 
be curious about your experience, about how your body feels. And then when you're ready to, from here, if you're on your forearms, just coming back up onto your hands, you're going to transition into squat, into malasana. So if you take your left toes to point out, and you're just going to step your right foot in, and then find your squat, your malasana. So in your malasana, again, you can be still here. You can find a bit of movement from side to side. Your heels can be down or they can be lifted. There's lots of different options. And you have a few breaths to work here, whether you're working with big heel or whether you're working with a little bit of movement. And then when you're ready to, you take your hands down onto the mat, straightening out the legs, and then you can reset the feet again, either touching or about hip width distance. Take your hands onto your shins, come into a halfway lift, breathe in, and then exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms all the way up, Udhva Hastasana. And then exhale, release the arms down by your sides, coming to stand, Tadasana. Again, just find a moment here in Tadasana. Eyes can be closed or open. Feel the feet, feel the breath. Allow yourself just to stand to treat Tadasana in the same way as you treat all the other asana, all the other postures. And then when you're ready to here, you're gonna start to come onto the other side. So we're gonna do Garudasana, eagle pose, on the left, so if you breathe in, sweep the arms up, and then exhale, you're gonna take the left arm under, sit into the legs, and then this time, it's the left leg over. Remember, you can have your left toes on the floor if you like here, if you're not in the mood to balance. They don't have to be off the floor. Think about drawing the inner thighs in. Stay with the breath and keep knitting together the abdominals. And again here, a bit like you're in slow motion, think about the transition rather than the pose. You're gonna to start to come into your half moon, Ardha Chandrasana. It's a little bit like you're moving underwater, nice and slow. Just pay attention to how it feels to really take your time to get into the pose. Again, you might grab a block, you might grab Floor. You might keep your hand lifting off the floor. Think about pushing into the right foot and then keeping that left leg strong, whether the foot is pointed or flexed. And staying light on the right hand. Again, nice and slowly, a bit like you're in slow motion, start to bend into that right knee and you're going to land it back into your warrior two, Virabhadrasana two. You can find the feet and adjust when you get there. And then from here, we flip the front palm, reach forward, reverse. And then we take it into our extended side angle, Pajrakonasana. So you can have your forearm over your thigh. Left arm can reach over the head if you like. Keep the connection with the back foot, keep pushing down. And again, just like before, if you notice that you're sort of sinking into that right arm, think about pushing the arm into the leg. And same principle on your exhale, you're working with Spinning the chest open towards the ceiling. On your next inhale, you're going to come back up. And as you exhale, warrior two. We're breathing into reverse. And then we're going to take it into our lizard lunge. So cartwheel the hands inside of that right foot. Again, you can walk the right foot out to the side. You've got all your options here, whether you're up on your hands, I quite like the blocks, maybe on your forearms, back knee can be down or it can be lifted, you can be still or you can be finding movement. And it's okay if you notice that maybe this side feels kind of very different to the first side. Things might not work on this side in the same way that they did on the other. And that's fine. Work with your body, not against it. You don't have to have sort of perfect symmetry between the two sides of the body. We're going more with how the pose feels rather than what it looks like. Oh, 
Okay. And then here, we're going to move into our squat, into our malasana. So same as the other side. Just up on your hands, turn your right toes out, and then step that left foot forward. And you're coming into that squat, into your malasana. And again here, you could be still. You might find a bit of movement. You can even get your arms involved here. So if you're working with stillness, you can play around with lifting the arms up. Um, if you're working with movement, you might work with finding some movement with the arms to go with moving from side to side here if you like. That's, these are all just different options. And you can sort of have a, a play around, see what feels best for this particular practice. A couple more breaths here. And then on an exhale, if you start to bring your hands down, straightening out through the legs, you can walk the feet in here if you like. Take your hands onto your shins, and then you can make your way back into a down dog, either through a vinyasa, or you can step straight into it. And then from your downward facing dog here. If you inhale, roll forwards into a plank position. And as fast or as slow as you'd like, you can just start to make your way all the way down so that you're lying on your abdomen. And then here, your arms can either be down by your sides, or if you prefer, you can interlace them into a fist at your lower back. So we're coming into our locust pose, Shalabhasana. So we're just gonna inhale, lift the head, lift the chest and then you can lift the feet here and the legs. Think about the lift coming from the chest bone here and then the tops of the, the thighs. Keeping the jaw soft, the breath smooth. And then exhale, release. You can use your hands as a, a pillow underneath your forehead here if you like. And you can also sway the hips from side to side if that feels good. And then for this next one, if you bring your hands forward, so you're on your fingertips, and they're a bit like tents here. And then you're going to bend the knees, um, flex the feet, and bring the heels together. So what you want to do is really squeeze the heels in here, so you start to feel this in the glutes. So squeezing the heels, pushing into the hands, lift the head, lift the chest, and then keep really squeezing the heels in towards each other. So we're really working with the glutes. Breath stays smooth. Squeezing the heels in, pushing into the fingertips. And then exhale, release all the way down. Maybe swaying the hips from side to side. Find a few breaths here, feel the breath in the back of the body. And then we're going to take this into um, a yin pose called open wing. So if you take your right arm out to the side, and then you're just going to bring your head onto the floor, roll over onto the right-hand side of your uh, body here. So your top leg is your left leg. And then you can take your left leg behind you. Now, if you like, you can reach your left arm behind you. It might also be nice here just to grab um, a block or a cushion for underneath your head. So especially if you feel like it's just causing tension in your neck um, to have your head on the floor. And we're looking to feel something in the right shoulder here. So you might feel it more at the head of the shoulder where it's, you've got that sort of uh, contact with the ground. You might feel it more uh, in the back, closer towards the shoulder blade few different places where you might feel this one. You can let your eyes close if that feels okay, or you can have them half closed if not. Again, just thinking about finding a sense of softness in the body. We have a little bit longer left here. releasing out through the shoulders. And then when you're ready, 
over to here. You can start to just nice and slowly remove any padding out from underneath the head. Make your way back to lying down on your abdomen. Again, just find a couple of moments here. Maybe notice how one shoulder feels, how the other one feels, and how your whole body feels. And then we're going to move to the other side. So this time you're taking your left arm out to the side. And then you want to roll yourself over so that you're on the left side of the body. You can take your right leg behind you. And again, if you find that you want something underneath your head here, just for a little bit of support um, so you're not straining the neck, then do that. Again, you've got that option here as well of... Um, reaching your right arm behind you. And just noticing how this pose feels on this side of the body. It's quite common to feel like things are very different from one side to the other, and that's really uh, quite normal as well. Most of us tend to have um, a side of the body that is a bit more dominant, that we do more things with. And that's fine. We don't need to kind of create perfect symmetry between the two sides. In the same way that we, most of us are either right-handed or left-handed and we do all of our writing with <laughs> that hand and we don't spend hours obsessively trying to learn how to write with the other hand. The same can be applied with within the context of asana. We can accept that one side is quite different to the other. And again, we can approach the practice from a feeling perspective, how it feels, how we experience it, rather than an aesthetic one. And again, just a couple of breaths in this one. And then when you're ready to... You can just remove any padding out of the way. Again, you might decide just to lie on your front for a couple of moments. Notice how your upper body feels. Notice how your whole body feels here. And then from here, if you make your way to lying down on your back, so you can always just um, roll yourself over, if you like, so that you're lying on your back, and you can bring your feet, um, soles of the feet flat on the floor here, and you want them quite wide, so you want them about mat width distance here, so they're actually quite wide, and then I'm just going to ask you to take um, both of your knees over to your left, so you're dropping the knees over to the left, and then reach your arms over your head and catch hold of your right wrist with your left hand. Now you're going to scoop your upper body over in the same direction as the knees here. So you're kind of creating a bit of a C curve with the upper body. If you like, and it feels okay for the knees, you can place your left foot on top of the right thigh here. But only if the knee is happy with you doing that. If that's not feeling so good, obviously avoid it. And if having hold of the wrist is not feeling so great in the shoulders, let go of the grip. And again here, you can have the eyes closed if that feels okay. Maybe softening the jaw again. Sense the support of the ground beneath the body, just allowing yourself to really soften into this pose. Finding that quality of yielding.
last couple of moments here. And again, just being gentle with your body, there's no rush. You can start to just slowly bring yourself back up to the center. Just reset the spine, reset the the pelvis, your back sort of in the center of your your mat here, maybe just reset the feet as well. And then once you're ready, you can move over to the other side. This time we're allowing the knees to drop over to the right. Taking the arms over the head, catch hold of your left wrist with your right hand, and then scoop your upper body over to the right. Again, if you want to place the right foot on top of the left thigh and that feels okay for the knee, you can. If that's not feeling so great, obviously avoid it. And if it's not very comfortable to have hold of the wrist on this side, again, you can release the grip. And if you can here, allowing yourself to find a restful element to this pose. Know that there is ultimately nothing to do here. You can allow yourself to be. You can allow the sensations of the pose to unfold. We've just got a couple of moments left here. And then when you're ready to again, just nice and gently, there's no rush. You can start to bring yourself back up to the center. If it feels right to here, you can hug the knees into the chest. You can give yourself another squeeze, maybe again finding a bit of movement like you did at the, the start of your practice. And then just rolling over onto one side. So it can be the right or the left you choose. Find a couple of moments here. And again, there's no rush. Just once you're ready to, you can push yourself up to seated. You can kneel, you can sit cross-legged, totally up to you. You can even sit on something like a, a block or a cushion if that's more comfortable. And just finding a, a moment here, eyes can be closed or they can be half closed. Notice your body, notice your breath without judgment, without intellectualizing anything. Just notice what you feel and where. And then we're going to bring the hands into Anjali Mudra, so a prayer at the heart center. Or if you prefer, you can have your hands overlapping over the heart. And just finding a moment here to acknowledge yourself or your practice for taking this time out of your day. Knowing that when you take this time out to be more mindful and more conscious, it's not just you that gets to benefit, it's the other people around you. And also taking a moment here to acknowledge the teachings of yoga and all of the teachers that have come before us. Taking your breath in through the nose. And exhale to sigh it out. 
Gently bow your head towards your own heart, your inner teaching. Thank you very much. Thank you for allowing me to guide you through this practice.